Now it's Namco's turn to add to the great Mega Drive shooter deluge of December 1990. Like its arcade counterpart, Dangerous Seed never made it out of Japan. The game begins with a ship that, inexplicably, splits into three parts. Now you must guide the first, smallest part of the ship through the initial levels, battling all sorts of insect-based enemies as you hurtle through space on your way to destroy the Danger Seed. Once you reach level 5, the second and eventually third parts of your ship will reappear and reattach. After this happens, you're able to switch your formation on the fly, which results in different types of fire. Alpha formation concentrates fire to the front, while beta is a mix of frontal assault and lateral fire. The final formation sends fire to the rear of your ship. Players who just want to experience the levels where all three ship segments are present can simply set the difficulty to digest mode and skip the opening levels altogether. During each level, I didn't really find these different formations too useful. Especially because the standard enemies in each level take a ton of bullets to destroy. A full-on frontal assault seems like your only real chance most of the time. Spreading out your fire seems really ineffectual. The bosses, on the other hand, aren't nearly as tough and since they tend to move around the whole screen, using all three formations is pretty effective. Dangerous Seed on the Mega Drive makes a few departures from its arcade counterpart. While the segmented ship still breaks apart at the beginning of the game and eventually reforms, giving you new formations to play with, the ship segments themselves act as your life system in the arcade game. Until all three ships form again, you're left piloting the first piece of the ship through the first part of the game. Should this segment be destroyed, your second life consists of playing as the second segment of the ship, complete with different weaponry. Likewise, if this is destroyed, the final ship segment is your last hope. Lose this piece, and it's game over. There are other differences, too. Specifically, the sheer amount of damage each enemy can take and the overall length of each level. After playing the coin-op version of Dangerous Seed, the levels in the Mega Drive game seem to go on forever. Dangerous Seed marks what appears to be the first game from developer Tosa for the Mega Drive. Tosa may not be a name you've heard before, but you've almost definitely played its game. The studio is sort of a vendor, sometimes working on parts of games, other times working on whole games for bigger studios. And its name is almost never on the games it develops. Founded in 1979, Tosa got its console start in the mid-80s working on games for multiple publishers. And while there's some real crap in its past, Tosa has also had a hand in games like Kid Icarus and the Game & Watch series for Nintendo, the Bases Loaded series for Jalico, the Namco Museum games on the PlayStation, and even some of the portable Dragon Quest games. Tosa is still going strong today, with over 1,000 employees across multiple studios in Japan and China and you'll still almost never see its name on its products. And that's the reason why I'm saying this appears to be the first Tosa game on the Mega Drive. I can't be 100% sure. 
It's not surprising that Dangerous Sea didn't come to the US. Not only is it based on an arcade game released exclusively in Japan, but it's really not a very good port. The increased difficulty didn't make it a better game, and the amount of flicker and slowdown sucks a lot of the excitement out of the experience. (laughs) 